What you just said is make sure your kids do it the right way, not do the ritual. What's up, guys? Welcome to another five minute fatherhood. So one of the things that is being said about culture today is we live in a cancel culture, which is to say that we really don't understand or we cannot figure out as a culture when somebody does something that's clearly wrong, how are they ever redeemed? How are yeah. they ever restored or ever brought back in? Do we do we even understand what forgiveness is? And one of the things or the ideas that I've heard sort of thrown around that I thought was really interesting is that <clears throat> part of the problem is that is that we now are not being raised in sibling groups uh, the way in the past many people were yeah. raised. And when you are living your life with a bunch of siblings, you have to constantly learn how to forgive. Yeah. Um, and even those who are being raised in sibling groups, oftentimes um, what you'll see in our culture is we will individualize the kids, put them in their own rooms, give them their own stuff, keep them sort of separated from each other, making sure that they don't ever have to really figure out how to learn to love each other and forgive each other. And so part of what we want to encourage you guys to do is if you have multiple kids or you're thinking about raising a larger family, one of the challenges you're going to have to face that's really going to bless your kids and the world is you're going to have to help your kids figure out how to forgive each other when they hurt each other over and over and over again. And this is a very old problem, you guys. In Luke 17, you know, Jesus was, was asked, that what do you do if you if your brother sins against you seven times in the same day and turns to you um, and Jesus says if they turn to you and say seven times I repent you must forgive them and then Jesus also talks about in Matthew eighteen he talks through the idea of of this constantly forgiving seventy times seven yeah um, this is a really famous way that Jesus talked about forgiveness that we do extend a ton of forgiveness to again even in this context he says to your brother. Um, and so there was a sense in in these cultures where there was sort of a limit to how much forgiveness you could extend in a day or overall um, to to a brother, and you'd actually count. You know, if you get to seven, maybe that was the limit. And so a huge part of what you guys are going to be working through with your kids is how do you craft a culture of forgiveness where it actually is healing enough to help them have deep relationships. Um, and I used to think it was as simple as telling your kids re- to really quickly say, say you're sorry, say you're sorry, you know, say I love you, yeah. hug, kiss, make up, whatever. <laughs> um, but one of the things that's interesting that Jesus says in Luke 17 is the brother says, I repent. And then Jesus says, then you forgive him. Um, <clears throat> and I don't think that he's necessarily saying that you, you don't forgive them if they don't say that. But I do think that one of the steps that you need to learn, if you really want your kids to forgive each other from the heart when they're going to hurt each other seven times a day, yeah. is that you have to help them to not just forgive, but also to repent to each other. Like to be able to articulate really clearly, like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, they're going to say that they're sorry, um, but, but first, can you explain how that made you feel like when they did that to you? Like really help your kids empathize with the actual pain or damage being done to the other person. And so I know that for me and my fathering, there was this constant tension I was feeling between um, really training children uh, to be open hearted and forgiving and not holding grudges um, and also training the kids who were kind of, you know, constantly doing the damage um, to also like become empathetic, to listen to and at times to ask, how can I like, is there anything I can do to make this right? Um, And so it's that constant balance of repentance and forgiveness that I think really creates uh, real health in a family and particularly in a sibling group. But Jeff, what are your, how have you thought about uh, doing this? Yeah, no, I agree. And I think I, I, I love that. And it's, and one thing I would just add is what, um, what you just said is make sure your kids do it the right way, not do the ritual. Right. And so like, I'm always yeah. calling out, like we, we do when our kids do have these means, I'll try to coach them moments. I'll try to coach them and Hey, will you, I want you to go up to your sister and just have a talk with her. Uh, I want you to, and sometimes I'll try to make it vague because I want to see how they'll do it. I don't want you to say, say this. I don't usually say, say, I'm sorry, but just say, Hey, can you go ask her for forgiveness? Can you apologize? Can you mm-hmm. at, can you tell her what you did? I just I try to get the conversation going for them, which I think helps. And then two, if they do it with any type of ritualistic, like just say it to say it, then I just immediately stop it and just kind of basically like, no eye contact, like think about that. That's not what we do it. You know, I want you to understand, you know, all these different things, but that is tough though, too, because I do think there's, there's a tension there 
that I think is really tough line to walk. Cause I think sometimes if you're only waiting to then say sorry or ask for forgiveness until you feel it, that doesn't ever always go well either. Right. right. There's something about the semi ritual of doing it that basically you're basically almost you're that's almost the horse that's leading the wagon right that your wagon your emotions will catch up sometimes when you force yourself and i think c.s lewis talks about that somewhere brilliantly where he paints that picture of like mm-hmm. sometimes though also doing it kind of uh uh so, like and you've noticed that right when you kind of begrudgingly when i begrudgingly go to a listen and say oh i'm sorry what's funny is sometimes i like then all of a sudden my heart just softens right in that moment i'm like okay i am sorry you almost have to say the begrudging one and then to let it soften you up to then say the second one you know so i don't know so that's a really tough tension i think to walk with children but i think being mindful of the whole thing is really important of not letting it be ritualistic or just do it to do it because then that only hardens hearts but then also um there is a level i think of the ritual of the back and forth that is important um coaching the kids how to really seek the highest good and repentance yeah. and the love of each other so yeah so it's way more well-rounded than just the you know the bam this is done the transaction you know is another word i'm trying to think right. of so um yeah, so yeah i think that's really important so i i think you guys this is this is gonna be one of the biggest challenges i think you're gonna have as a father is just like in a situation where there's something happening like this you have to sort of get involved enough to figure out whose heart you're gonna work on yeah and like jeff's describing sometimes the heart that you're working on is the one forgiving and that you need to tell the gospel to them mm-hmm. help them understand guys the the foundation of our forgiveness is never that the person doing the damage uh, it has earned or we owe them forgiveness. Yeah. The only ground of forgiveness, Jesus says, is that I have forgiven you so much. So now I've, I've told that you're standing on the ground of unmerited forgiveness. You need to give unmerited forgiveness to others. And so it's the gospel that really gospeling your kids' hearts that needs to drive that conversation. And then over here, when you're talking to a child who's done the damage and is really hard-hearted and is, unfor- is unrepentant, um, really helping them empathize and sometimes really making sure, like I've read one study one time that described how you create empathy in a child. And one of the things that they said is that the, the biggest thing that creates empathy in a child is consequences for, for them doing wrong, not actually trying to get them to understand what the other person went through. Yes, um, totally. But, and, and that's kind of the ground of empathy. And so sometimes when you have an unrepentant child who has a hard heart, there, there does need to be discipline there. Um, and as, and that's a part of trying to create this balance. But man, what you guys want, and this is going to be one of the biggest challenges of your life as you're raising siblings, is to create a culture of, of, real, of real forgiveness in the home. But what that does and what we're talking about in our culture that, that increasingly does not understand forgiveness, um, for them to suddenly see emerging all of these families that really are truly gracious uh, to one another, even in the face of a lot of really tough stuff, that is gonna that's gonna preach the gospel. 